future cars will go really fast. Does that mean future car wrecks will be really bad? Not necessarily. In the future, crashes will be a thing of the past. No more crashes, ever? That's a long way from where we are today. There's more than 1.2 million people getting killed in road traffic accidents each year. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, traffic accidents are globally the leading cause of death among young people aged 10 to 24 years old. It's not a problem. It's epidemic. The cure for the epidemic is being developed in the labs of Volvo. It was here that the three-point seatbelt was created. And it's here that new concepts for a crash-proof future are being hatched. We take safety very seriously. Their newest model is designed to be virtually death-proof. Creating a car like that starts with analyzing the real-world physics of collisions. Meet Mr. and Mrs. Bengtson. Clive, who's doing the driving today, has been working hard all week. Meet Lars and Anna, a newlywed couple. While the couple are arguing about what route to take, the driver takes a moment to look down at the map, not realizing that he's starting to drift into the opposite lane. In the other car, Clive is listening to his family, drifting off in his mind, not realizing the car coming straight towards him. By playing out thousands of realistic scenarios, engineers are able to constantly refine airbag responsiveness, frame design, and other components of the death-proof car. Looking up from the map, the couple realize that they're in the wrong lane. At the same moment, Clive looks up and he starts to apply the brakes, but it's too late. These scenarios have helped Volvo build ultra-safe cars, but they're not resting on their laurels. Their vision? A future where crashing is not just survivable, but impossible. This is my car, and I really like it. In the craft-free future, thanks to auto brake systems, I don't have to worry about it getting damaged. To make a car that won't let itself crash, you have to give it senses. We gave this car eyes. Here we have a laser radar, which transmits laser beams in front of the car, and here's a receiver. Based on this information, we can calculate the closing velocity to objects in front of the car. And you have to give the car reflexes. If you're about to crash, your car will take the wheel. If a collision is imminent and the driver does not take appropriate action, we can automatically brake the car and completely avoid the collision. Using its radar eyes to spot dangers and auto braking and auto steering to avoid them, this is one car that won't crash, even if you want it to. But the real goal is to create a car that works with you to avoid collisions. So we can monitor what's outside the car. We can also monitor how the car is being used. This kind of research can help us in the future to actually get inside the driver's head. Using software which monitors and tracks your eye movements, head position, and reaction time, they're building a future car that will compensate for your bad driving habits. It will know when you're distracted, when you're overreacting, when you're nervous, and when you're angry. It will know you better than you know yourself. Studying people is by far the, the most important thing for us now, and we are involved in a number of different projects in order to build this knowledge. But studying people is only the beginning of Volvo's research. It turns out that the real secret of a crash-free future may be a car that is less like a person and more like a grasshopper. We took the grasshopper, we put it in a harness uh, just before a video screen, and on that video screen we would show it sequences that looks like near collisions. Researchers noticed that grasshoppers travel in swarms of millions separated from each other by fractions of inches, but never collide. If cars could do that, the benefits would be huge. 
you can think of a swarm of cars that are moving really closely on the highway and then you have a greater capacity on the same highway which will reduce congestion. Now we discovered that when a grasshopper is about to have a collision, its nervous system will almost immediately take action. For instance, when it is almost about to have a collision on the left, its wings will start to compensate so that it moves to the right side. The grasshopper's nervous system is made up of highly specialized clusters of nerve cells in various parts of its body. This enables the grasshopper to detect threats and make adjustments in fractions of a second. The main reason this system is so efficient? Grasshoppers don't really have a brain. They do have brains, of course, but only tiny rudimentary ones. Nerve signals don't waste time by going through a central processing unit like a brain. And that's what makes a grasshopper so incredibly efficient in swarms of erratic traffic. It is, in essence, a driverless vehicle. Engineers think in the future they'll be able to replicate this behavior in cars using vast arrays of sensors and automated reflexes to make them hypersensitive, instinctive, and utterly crash-proof. The exciting thing here is really that we can take advantage of four and a half billion years of evolution when we are designing new collision avoidance systems for the future. And the same systems will let future cars travel quickly and safely, even when packed within inches of one another. I hope that we will see a swarm of cars going closer, faster and safer. When you drive closer, the wind drag is lower, which will reduce power consumption, and that's good for the environment. Swarms of cars on future superhighways sounds like a smart idea, 